In the final seconds before impact, the system triggers a track via missile control. The missile itself transmits data back to the radar, telling it what it sees. This allows for very precise final guidance corrections, with the missile detonating very close to the target aircraft. Such a technique makes it very difficult for the aircraft to evade the missile, either by electronic jamming or aerial maneuvering. The basic combat formation of the Patriot is the battery. A battery contains all of the essential equipment for a Patriot missile to operate in the field. There are five essential types of equipment in each battery. We've got the phase array radar, uh, which is the eyes of the Patriot system, the engagement control station, which is the computer system housed inside a van uh, where the officer and the non-commissioned officer are inside that actually do the engaging of the, uh, the hostile aircraft or missiles. We have the electronic power plant, which provides the electrical uh, generated power for those two pieces of equipment. An antenna mass group, uh, which is used to provide uh, tactical as well as voice data to not only our sister batteries, but also our higher headquarters. We have the launcher station downrange, uh, which is the muscle behind the Patriot missile, obviously one of the most photographed pieces of, of equipment in the Patriot uh, battery. And uh, those are the big five. Uh, that's what basically comprises the, the Patriot battery. All the other pieces of equipment are used in support of those big five. The launcher unit has four missiles, each in its own sealed container. Each battery can have several of these mobile launchers. In the normal fire unit, we have eight. We can't have up to 16 launchers per firing battery. A normal crew of uh, three in place the launching station and uh, put it to remote before they vacate. The launcher itself is co controlled from the engagement control station, which is uh, quite a distance from the launching station itself. Like the launcher, the phased array radar is not manned, but remotely operated. There is no operators in the radar when it's actually running. Uh, the only time there's anyone out there is when they're doing maintenance on it. The operators are inside the intercontrol station. The brains of the Patriot battery is the engagement control station. This vehicle-mounted shelter contains the computers which control the launchers and phased array radar. The station is led by a tactical control officer, or TCO, who sits to the right. High-altitude air defense units such as the Patriot are one of the career opportunities open to women in the U.S. Army. Okay, um, during um, the exercise in Saudi Arabia, we normally had four people inside the engagement control station when we were actually doing the engagements. Okay, I'm assisted by a tactical control assistant, and uh, he or she will do the actual firing. Okay, my function is friendly protect, to make sure that um, he or she does not shoot down any friendly aircraft that might be flying in the area. Okay, the other position is for the 31 mic, or the multi-channel communications operator. Okay, this person is basically monitoring communications on all lines and making sure that the, um, the messages and the traffic that's going back and forth over our, our UHF uh, systems are operational. Okay, and that fourth person is usually brought into the van as a, um, as a recorder. Okay, he or she may grab a headset, uh, start writing down any messages we might be receiving from higher headquarters, and are also assisting the TCA. Well, their, their basic function is to assist the TCA and the TCO so that nothing interferes with them during the actual engagement. On the radar display, aircraft are identified by different types of symbols, depending on whether they are friendly, hostile, or still unidentified. When a hostile aircraft is engaged by the Patriot missile system, a hexagon appears over the flashing aircraft symbol. The Patriot missile is identified by a small football. When the aircraft is hit, a flashing tic-tac-toe symbol appears. The nice thing the Patriot offers us is uh, it's not only a very powerful weapon system, 
but we can train anytime we want because it is a computer. Uh, the basic gist of Patriot is a computer system, and just like you go to the arcade to play video games, this system is capable of doing the same thing. So I don't have to have hundreds of aircraft in the sky to train my soldiers. I can actually create video games that simulate an actual combat condition, put it into the computer, and have my soldiers train uh, on that video game itself. So in that sense, yes, it's very easy for us to train our soldiers with minimal assets, as opposed to things like Nike Hercules, where the only thing you saw was what was actually flying in the sky. Uh, there were no uh, mock-up simulations. Defense against airplanes is not the only mission of air defense. Starting in World War II, missiles started to become a problem as well. The bombardment of the Belgian port of Antwerp by German V-1 cruise missiles in 1944 was countered by the high-tech air defense weapons of the day, the radar-directed anti-aircraft gun and the new proximity fuse. During World War II, uh, specifically October 1944 up until March 1945, the Germans launched, launched a, a V-1 offensive against the port of Antwerp, Belgium, in an attempt to knock out the port as a logistics base for the armies in Europe. Uh, the defense for the port was given to the uh, anti-aircraft forces of the U.S. Army and the British Army to defend against the V-1s. At that time, about this time, the, uh, the anti-aircraft forces at that time had obtained uh, a good supply of proximity fuses. Now this was a development that occurred later in the war. Uh, proximity fuse was a device that actually was on the end of an artillery round, which is actually a small radar, which the idea was that when it was fired into the area, it would detonate when it was pro in proximity to a target. Uh, this enabled in, uh, air defenders to, be, to, to achieve that one-shot, one-kill ratio that uh, has always eluded air defenders up till that time. Uh, another innovation was the use of radar in conjunction with an M9 director, which actually then tracked the target automatically using radar and the director. So the crew, all they had to do was actually fire the gun. It was an automated system, which is, uh, of course, revolutionary for its time, and again, contributed to the high success rate the air defenders had against the V1s. Of about 5,000 V1s known to be launched against Antwerp, uh, only about 200 ever reached the target. It was an incredible bit of firing. Although Army anti-aircraft guns were successful against winged cruise missiles, they could not shoot down the much faster ballistic missiles of the day. It wasn't until the 1960s that the first successful tests to shoot down tactical ballistic missiles were conducted by the U.S. Army. As seen here, a Hawk missile was used to shoot down tactical ballistic missiles in a series of experiments. Serious attention to the tactical ballistic missile threat did not begin until the early 1980s. Warsaw Pact felt that the Patriot was so lethal that its air force would face a nearly impossible hurdle when operating over NATO territory in the event of war. The Warsaw Pact would need to eliminate the Patriot air defense barrier first by means of ballistic missile attack. To cope with such missiles, the U.S. Army began a program to permit the Patriot to defend itself against such tactics. Well, when the Patriot system was, was fielded at first in, uh, in Europe in uh, the mid-1980s, it had only a capability of defending against uh, aircraft. Uh, the Army realized uh, the importance that tactical ballistic missiles would play and began to develop a capability to counter that threat. And uh, a couple years after the initial fielding, we developed a, a self-defense protection capability for Patriot which we called uh, the PAC-1 capability. Uh, however, uh, that certainly wasn't uh, a potent enough capability to defend against all types of tactical ballistic missiles and uh, didn't allow us a capability of protecting anything outside uh, the actual perimeter of the battery itself. 
So the Army went ahead and developed what they called the PAC-2 capability, and that capability 